Welcome back to Creepy Uncovered. In this video we go behind the monster of Britain's most prolific sex offender, Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile was a household name in the UK, known for his eccentric personality, his charity work, and his long-running TV show. Jim will fix it. However, his legacy has been tainted by the revelation of his heinous crimes, which were uncovered after his death in 2011. In this video, we will explore Jimmy Savile's life, from his childhood to his death, and the crimes that he committed. Jimmy Savile's childhood was marked by poverty and ill health. He was born on October 31, 1926, in Leeds, England, and was the youngest of seven children. His parents, Vincent and Agnes Savile, were working-class immigrants from Poland, and Jimmy grew up in a small two-room flat in the suburb of Burley. Savile suffered from a range of health problems as a child, including rickets, asthma, and a heart condition. He spent long periods in hospital, which left him feeling isolated and vulnerable. In his autobiography, he described himself as a sickly child who was often teased and bullied by his classmates. Salvo also had a difficult relationship with his mother, who he claimed was domineering and emotionally distant. He later wrote that his mother had refused to show him any affection when he was young, which left him with a deep sense of insecurity and a need for attention. Despite these challenges, Savile developed a keen interest in music and entertainment from an early age. He started performing as a DJ at local dance halls when he was a teenager, and he soon developed a reputation for his energetic and flamboyant style. It was this early love of music and entertainment that would later lead him to pursue a career in broadcasting and become one of the most famous faces on British television. In his adulthood, Jimmy Savile went on to achieve great success in his career and became a well-known figure in British popular culture. After completing his national service in the Royal Air Force, he began working as a DJ in nightclubs and dance halls across the country. He quickly gained a reputation for his charismatic personality and his ability to entertain large crowds. In the 1960s, Savile made the transition to television and became the host of the popular music show, Top of the Pops. He also presented a range of other shows, including Jim Will Fix It, which became one of the most popular children's programs of the 1970s and 80s. Savile's eccentric style and catchphrases such as Now then, now then. How's about that then? and, goodness gracious, made him a household name and a beloved figure among his fans. He was also known for his charitable work, and he raised millions of pounds for various hospitals and other organizations over the course of his career. Despite his public image as a generous and kind-hearted celebrity, there were also rumors and allegations of impropriety surrounding Savile throughout his career. However, these claims were largely dismissed or ignored by the media and the public at the time. It was only after his death in 2011 that the full extent of his crimes came to light. Savile was awarded an OB in 1971 for his charity work, and he was knighted in 1990 for his services to charity. He also received numerous other awards, including the Pope John XXI Peace Prize and the British Philanthropist of the Year Award. However, these awards were later rescinded in light of the revelations about his crimes. The crimes committed by Jimmy Savile were shocking and disturbing, and the full extent of his abuse only came to light after his death. In 2012, a year after Seville died, a documentary aired on the BBC called Exposure, The Other Side of Jimmy Savile. The program interviewed victims of Savile's abuse and revealed the scale of his crimes. According to the report, Savile is believed to have sexually abused hundreds of victims, including children and vulnerable adults, over a period of several decades. The abuse took place in hospitals, schools, and other institutions, as well as in Savile's own home and dressing room. The victims described a range of abusive behaviors, including indecent exposure, groping, and rape. Many of the victims were too afraid to speak out at the time fearing that they would not be believed or that they would suffer reprisals if they reported the abuse. 
Savile's crimes were made possible in part by his position of power and influence. He was a well-known celebrity and had connections to the highest levels of British society, including members of the royal family and politicians. This allowed him to operate with impunity and to use his influence to silence his victims. Jimmy Savile had a number of high-profile friendships throughout his life, including with other celebrities and politicians. However, in light of his crimes, many of these relationships have come under scrutiny and have raised questions about who knew what about Savile's behavior. One of Savile's most controversial friendships was with the former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Savile was known to be a frequent visitor to 10 Downing Street during Thatcher's time in office, and she even awarded him an OB in 1971 for his charity work. However, after the revelations about Savile's crimes, questions were raised about whether Thatcher knew about his abusive behavior and whether she had turned a blind eye to it. Savile was also friends with a number of other celebrities, including the British comedian Freddie Starr and the disgraced pop mogul Jonathan King, both of whom have been convicted of sex offenses. King was a close friend of Savile's and was even named as an executor of his will. Savile was also known to associate with other criminals and underworld figures. In the 1960s, he was investigated by the police over allegations that he was involved in a protection racket and had connections to organized crime. However, no charges were ever brought against him. Savile's close relationships with other criminals and his connections to high-profile politicians have led to speculation that he may have been involved in wider networks of abuse and corruption. However, the full extent of his criminal activities may never be known, as many of his victims are no longer alive to speak out about their experiences. Jimmy Savile had a close relationship with the British rock star Gary Glitter, who was also later convicted of sex offenses against minors. The two men were known to be friends and had collaborated on a number of projects together, including a charity single in 1980. Their friendship first came to public attention in the early 1970s, when Glitter appeared on Savile's television program. Jim will fix it. In the show, Seville arranged for Glitter to meet his biggest fan, a young girl who was later revealed to have been one of Glitter's victims. In the years that followed, Glitter became a frequent guest on Savile's show, and the two men continued to work together on various projects. However, as allegations of sexual abuse began to emerge against both men, their friendship came under increasing scrutiny. In 1999, Glitter was convicted of possessing child pornography and served a short prison sentence. He was later arrested again in Vietnam on charges of sexually abusing two young girls and was deported back to the UK in 2008. In 2015, he was convicted of sexually abusing three young girls in the 1970s and 80s and was sentenced to 16 years in prison. Savile's own crimes came to light after his death in 2011, and it was later revealed that he and Glitter had been part of a wider network of child abusers in the entertainment industry. The revelations about their behavior have led to calls for greater accountability and transparency in the entertainment industry, and have highlighted the need to protect vulnerable children and adults from sexual abuse and exploitation. Jimmy Savile died on October 29, 2011, at the age of 84. At the time of his death, he was one of the most celebrated and respected figures in British entertainment with a long list of awards and honors to his name. However, in the years that followed, it became clear that Savile's reputation was built on a foundation of lies and abuse. Over the course of the investigation, hundreds of victims came forward with allegations of abuse, and the full extent of Savile's crimes began to emerge. In 2014, a report by the Metropolitan Police concluded that Savile had sexually abused at least 450 victims with the abuse spanning over six decades. The report also revealed that Savile had used his position of power and influence to silence his victims and to evade justice. The aftermath of Savile's crimes has been far-reaching and has led to significant changes in the way that allegations of sexual abuse and misconduct are dealt with in the UK. 
It has also raised important questions about the responsibility of institutions, such as hospitals and schools, to protect vulnerable people from abuse. In conclusion, Jimmy Savile was a complex individual, who achieved great success in his career and was widely admired for his charity work. However, the revelation of his crimes has tainted his legacy and raised important questions about the culture of silence that allowed him to operate for so long. Thanks for watching Behind the Monster. Like and subscribe for more true crime stories.